Okay, the bank is prepared, the pumps are set up, and the 12 by 410 foot long dam is being uh, transported to the installation site. Before it can be transported there, it actually needs to be turned around one time. So now we're turning it so it's going to unroll in that direction across the lake. Okay, I got the 12 foot dam in position at the top of the bank and we're sliding the uh, 18 inch dam underneath. That's going to help with the, the seal after uh, we get the 12 foot dam installed. We'll fill up that little one a little bit and hopefully improve the seal. It's pretty rocky down there. There it goes, watch those ropes! We have a 12 foot tall, 400 foot long aqua dam installed in Alcoba, Wyoming. This aqua dam has ropes underneath it going down, out, around the roll, and back to shore. These are restraint ropes. They're tied back to the excavator tracks right there. And that's used to restrain the roll from unrolling while the dam is filling. The corners of the dam are tied off to a piece of equipment on each side. So the idea is we want to start here and we want to take the dam on a path that ends over on the shore over there so we can isolate this work area for dewatering. There will also be a two foot tall dam installed at the top of the spillway. Now we're on top of the aqua dam as it's filling. It's only an inch or two above the uh, surrounding water level, but that's enough for it to stay in place and provide a relatively solid platform for people to walk on. The dam is about two-thirds of the way unrolled. We're getting ready to start a turn. We're pulling on the bottom seam with the forklift. Then we need to bring some equipment down on the far bank and pull on a rope that's wound around the end of the log that's on the outside of the turn to be made. And that'll help the dam unroll and be redirected in the direction that we want it to be to abut the bank at a good angle, a perpendicular angle. An initial pull has been made, an initial turn. We've got the loader hooked up, rope to the outside of the dam. Got it pretty close to the embankment. We've got a gut rope that goes around the aqua dam, right where I'm pointing. And then we tie those restraint ropes off to the gut rope so the dam holds itself in place. The dam gets wider, or is wider, where it's shallower, and narrows up where it's deeper. Just past the first turn there is the deepest point. Also the narrowest point for the aqua dam. This is the end of day one. We've filled the aqua dam up as much as we can before the end of the work period, tied it back so there's communication between the work area and the rest of the river. Come back tomorrow. And so you can see there's a little bit of flow going one way, then the other way. Those six inch pumps have turned on and it starts the flow going into the work area. The work area, once it's isolated and you continue to pump from it, will go down in height. The river will stay the same height. So the water levels on either side of the aqua dam are going to not be equal, and that is a hydraulic differential which imparts a force across the aqua dam. The aqua dam is not ready for that force until it's full, or nearly full. So to get away from that, 
we pumped as much water into the dam as we could before we reached the far bank with the aqua dam. There we've got the restraint ropes tied to shackles on the gut rope and then three more ropes tied to those shackles back to a bulldozer on shore. Okay, cutting the restraint ropes so that the restraint ropes all the way back to shore engage instead of everything depending on the one half inch gut rope. Now, by the end of this, we'll have three half inch ropes uh, taking up the force of the aquadam wanting to unroll. And as we cut the rope, uh, there's some slack that has to be taken up so the dam unrolls little by little and takes up that slack and then it becomes restrained again. The angle of these ropes to the roll is kind of off. It worked, but it would be better if they were coming straight back uh, from the roll. With the water clearly moving into the work area now. So we've cut the ropes, it unrolled up the bank, I hook on with a piece of equipment on each side of the log that the dam is rolled up on, and then pull to make the dam unroll all the way. We've got two pieces of equipment, we've got the ropes laid out, the ropes are wound around the end of the log on each side, here's where it's coming up the bank, we're going to put the 8 footer right there. So as the 12 footer fills, it doesn't want to keep creeping down that bank to the right, it will lean into the 8 footer that's going to take up that space. We've got the aqua dam unrolled now, we've got the 8 foot dam in the water and it's filling. Now we've got water in the tail end of the 12 footer up on dry ground, it's continuing to fill. The end of the 12 footer is tied off to the loader, the 8 footer is tied off to the forklift. Once the dam is full, that support will no longer be needed. We've got the 8 foot tall aqua dam tied off to the end seam of the 12 foot tall aqua dam. This is in case the water levels outside the work area spike from the hydro plant. So now the aqua dam is full, it's 12 feet tall at the lowest point along its path, and the work area is being dewatered. Where the deepest water is, that's where the aqua dam attains its full height. You can see it conforms to the uneven ground conditions on the bottom, but the top of the dam is pretty much level with itself. The work area almost completely dewatered. The contractors got a big berm of sand behind the aqua dam, which is a great thing because, as you can see, the water level spiked tremendously against the side of that 12 footer and we think that the, without the sand berm the 12 footer would not have stayed in place. Yet the support behind the aqua dam 